It was a warm summer night, and the stars twinkled like tiny diamonds in the dark sky. Best friends Emma, Leo, and Sophie were camping in Emma's backyard. The trio had just finished telling ghost stories when a strange sound broke the silence. Chirp click, whir click. The children froze. What was that? Sophie whispered, clutching her flashlight. Leo shrugged. Probably just crickets, he said, though his tone betrayed his curiosity. Emma shook her head. Crickets don't sound like that. It almost sounded like they were talking. Intrigued, they decided to investigate the mysterious sounds. Grabbing their flashlights and a notebook, the three friends tiptoed toward the edge of the yard, where the sounds seemed louder. Chirp click, whir click click. The children scanned the bushes and trees. Sophie spotted a group of bugs perched on a low branch. They were small, with shiny, colorful shells that gleamed in the moonlight. Those must be the ones making the noise, Sophie whispered. Emma nodded. But how are they doing it, and why does it sound so rhythmic? Leo took out his phone. Let's record the sounds and figure it out. He captured the strange noises, and the trio sat back in their tent, replaying the recording. Chirp click, whir click click, Emma's eyes lit up. It almost sounds like a pattern, like they're trying to say something. Do bugs talk? Sophie asked, tilting her head. Leo grinned. I think it's time for some research. The next day, they visited the local library. They found books about insects and their communication methods. Emma read aloud. Some insects use vibrations, others use sounds, and some even use chemical signals to communicate. Different species make different noises for mating, warning others, or finding food. But what about these specific sounds? Sophie asked, pointing at the recording on Leo's phone. We need to identify the bugs first, Ralph Leo suggested. They flipped through a field guide until Emma exclaimed, Here, these are jewel beetles. It says they use vibrations to communicate, and their sounds vary depending on their environment. Sophie frowned. But why does it sound so complex? It's almost like a language. Leo's face lit up. Maybe we're hearing a group of them talking to each other. We need to figure out what the pattern means. That evening, they returned to the yard, this time with a portable speaker and a makeshift chart to track the patterns in the sounds. They played back the recording and noticed that the bugs responded. Chirp click, whir click click, chirp click. Emma scribbled notes. It's like a call and response. Maybe they're warning each other about us. Or inviting more bugs to join them, Sophie added. They spent hours observing and recording, noticing that certain patterns repeated more often when they shone their flashlights on the beetles. They hypothesized that the bug's sounds were influenced by light and movement. A week later, after countless hours of research, the trio had a breakthrough. They presented their findings to their science teacher, Mr. Hayes, who helped them confirm their hypothesis. The jewel beetles were using specific sound frequencies to communicate about changes in their surroundings, including the presence of the children and their lights. So it's not a language like ours, Emma explained, but it's a way for them to send signals to each other. Mr. Hayes was impressed. You've discovered something fascinating about how animals adapt to their environments. Great job, all of you. The children's discovery sparked a love for science in all three of them. They started a bug explorers club, dedicating weekends to observing insects and learning more about their behavior. One evening, as they sat under the stars listening to the symphony of chirps and clicks, Sophie smiled. Who knew bugs could be interesting, Emma laughed. I'm just glad we solved the mystery, but who knows, maybe there's still more to learn about our talking bugs. Leo grinned. Let's find out. And with that, the three friends continued their adventures, eager to uncover the hidden wonders of the natural world.